Thanks, baby Robin, for that beautiful concert. Young American robins retain their spotted plumage through their first summer and will stay near their nest site. While the parents move on to hatch out another brood. I love spring and there are so many robins this year. It makes me so happy to see five or six just hopping around, but it's really hard to get good pictures of them. They move so fast. So today we are talking about listening to robins, the bird of spring. We get so excited just seeing them hunting for worms and building nests. The early bird gets the worm is a popular expression that encourages us to get out and work hard like the robin. What better way to introduce young people to nature than having robins in the backyard? Males and females are identical, although males may have brighter plumage and a more solid colored breast. Males will stake out territory and work to attract the female. Robins don't mate for life, but they are generally monogamous during breeding season. I think one reason we love robins so much is that they are very adapted to humans and live in urban areas. This nest from last year sat above the light by my son's back door. Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome to my channel where I teach about wildlife, environmental education, and organic gardening. You can check out my books in the description. My job is to be of service to you, so feel free to comment and let me know what interests you. The female robin wants a nest site with strong support and is often attracted to buildings because they supply that. Also, buildings offer a safety factor as many predatory birds are not as comfortable getting so close to humans. The female does the majority of nest building, although the male may help gather materials. She then lays three to four blue eggs and incubates them for two weeks. Hatching is hard work and can take the baby all day. Neonate robins have an egg tooth, which is a sharp hook at the end of their beak. They use the egg tooth to break a hole in their egg from the inside and then work to get out of the shell. For the first few days of the nestling's life, the parents regurgitate partly digested food into each baby's mouth. At around four days old, the parents break up worms and caterpillars into small mouthfuls. The babies grow fast and will reach the size of the parents in just three weeks. Fun but gross fact, the baby bird eliminates or poops in a specialized fecal sac, kind of like disposable diapers. Here's mom pulling out the sac. When they are very young and their intestines have not developed, the parents may eat the fecal sac. As they get older, as the chicks get older, the waste becomes more poop-like and the parent will carry it 20 to 50 yards away and then drop it in flight. By the way, this is a song thrush, which is a cousin to the robin. The babies grow fast and eat a lot. Each parent may make 50 trips a day, going out, catching food, and then returning to feed the chicks. It's a lot of work. Sometimes you may find a baby bird and not know if it needs intervention or help. I have a video on what to do if you find a baby bird that I will link here and below in the description. Many babies, like this one, are fledglings and have a mom nearby watching out for them. If you have any questions, you should call a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. Another crisis that can happen with our songbirds in our yards is that birds can fly into glass windows and be stunned or killed. This happens because they see the reflection in the window and don't realize the glass is in the way. There are things you can do to prevent bird strikes on your windows, and I will link some resources below. One way is to have a geometric pattern on the windows that is visible to the birds. Baltimore Oriole and American Robin chirping at each other. Robins may interact with other bird species in your yard. Depending on if they are protecting a nest, robins may be aggressive towards other species. Yum! Robins are omnivores. 
In the spring, the bulk of their diet comes from invertebrates, earthworms, caterpillars, and grasshoppers. In fact, I love to see robins at my garden, but I'm always like, please get the caterpillars and not my earthworms. Vision is the main sense used when hunting food. However, they will use hearing and smell as well. If you mow and water your yard, you may have robins come visiting, hunting for the disturbed food sources. Robins also eat berries and fruits, like on this rowan tree. They love crab apples, service berries, and mulberries, all which can be planted if you want to attract them. If you are a gardener, you may need to protect blackberries and raspberries from songbirds, including robins. Robins, as wonderful as they are, do have a drawback. Like many songbirds, they are carriers of the West Nile disease. They pass it on to mosquitoes, which can then give it to us. Fortunately, according to the CDC, only one in five people who are infected develop a fever and other symptoms. Robins are widespread in North America and the green is where they live all year long. Robins do migrate, but not like other birds. Birds like geese follow a definite north to south migration pattern. Robins have more variation in where they spend the winter and males are more likely to remain in northern states than females. Cold temperatures don't hurt most birds, as long as they have food. In the winter, robins are more likely to eat overwintering berries. They don't eat seeds like many other birds. Robins will eat suet, especially in winter when it's hard to find other foods. Suet is a good energy source for them. Mealworms and chopped apple can also be set out for robins. Like the American robin, the European robin is widespread across the continent. However, besides from their name, they don't have too much in common. The European robin is a much smaller bird that is in the Chad family or old world flycatchers, where the American robin is a thrush. This robin received its English name during the Middle Ages, so when European colonists came to America, they thought the American robin was a related bird. The pretty little Australian robin is in yet another bird family. The American robin's closest relative is the rufous collared thrush. Robins love to bathe in water. I took this at a spring near my home where the birds love to congregate. Birds love to bathe. I assume this is great fun for them, but more importantly, birds with dirty feathers don't fly well. Bathing cleans the feathers and encourages preening, which distributes the bird's natural oils through the wings. This oil helps them to remain waterproof and insulate themselves in winter. Bathing also helps get rid of parasites. You can attract robins to your yard by installing a bird bath. Very important. Don't put a bird bath out in the open. Place it near bushes or trees so your songbirds have a place to escape and can feel safe. You never know when a larger predator, like this Cooper's hawk, may need a drink or a snack. So place the bird bath in a protected area. Another way to protect songbirds is to keep your cat friends indoors. Thanks for watching and hopefully the information has been helpful to you. Check out what to do if you find an orphan bird next. The weather seems to have gone berserk lately, so I will leave you with thoughts for a wonderful sunny day.